So in today's video, I'm going to show you a methodical way of painting detailed mountain peaks. Most tutorials for this lean heavily on intuition, but I'm going to avoid that and instead stick with a direct and logical beginner friendly process. So the watercolor effect here is coming from a paper texture and the Alpine Forest brush kit. And the first thing I need to do is lay down a background wash for the sky. So for the color, I'll choose a pretty dark indigo tone like that. And for the brush, I'm going to use the fuzzy round brush at the largest size and just lay down a rough background. After that, I'm going to grab the uh, misty water blender down here. And again, at the largest size, I'll just run it back and forth and try to soften this up into a kind of ombre fade. Now after that background wash is all finished, I'm going to use the eraser brush set to the Forster Fine Liner, maybe around 20% or so, and I'm just going to carefully rough out the silhouette of this mountain. Now all this watercolor below that line needs to be uh, cleared, so I'm going to do that easily with the freehand selection tool and basically just make a huge selection that carefully follows the edge of the mountain here. And then after that, I can just open the layers panel, tap on the layer and click clear, and it will just delete everything that we selected. And if your mountain range here, if the silhouette didn't turn out quite how you wanted it, you can of course grab the arrow tool, set it to warp, and you might be able to kind of bend it and warp it into a, a ridge line that you like a little bit more. Now to start adding details on the face of this mountain, I'm going to first make a new layer above the background, and I'm going to start by adding some kind of rocky outcroppings. So I'm going to keep the same color we used before, and I'm going to switch back to the fuzzy round brush. And at sort of a medium size, maybe 30 or 40 percent, I'm going to go in there and just in three, four, five places, make a kind of a dotted uh, structure like this. It's very linear, starts small, gets a little bit fatter, and I'm going to do these a few times just randomly on the face of the mountain. Now these ended up a little bit too dark and I don't want them to be black or they're just going to lose all the detail. So I'm going to lighten the opacity of that layer just to make them kind of a dark gray tone. I think that looks pretty good. Then after that, I'm going to make another new layer and we're going to do a little bit of sketching. So for that, I won't change the color. I'm just going to change the brush to the HB sketching pencil. Now before I can sketch out the highlights, I need to choose a light source direction, so I think I'm just going to have it coming here from the right side. And that means the right side of each of these peaks is going to catch most of the light. So I'm just going to start at the tip of each peak, draw a random shape down here, and then reconnect it with a valley. So I'll do it again here so you can see it. And all this is random, I just want to make sure it reconnects with the valley, and then sort of reconnects with it in a way that it continues up with the slope. Now in some cases where we don't see the valley, we just have to guess. So I'll do a kind of a crazy shaped one that just goes off the edge. And over here, again, if I'm really imagining this light source, maybe it does catch just a little bit of that peak. And that's all uh, based on the ridge line that you drew. Everything down here is just totally abstract and you can be pretty random with it. So I think I'll just do a couple of random highlights down here like this. And just to make those easier to see, I'm going to scribble on each one to fill it in. Now once the highlights have all been blocked out, I'm going to do my first layer of shading. There's going to be three layers. So I'll make the first one on its own layer, again above everything. Same color. I'm just going to change back to the fuzzy round brush. And before I was using it at a pretty large size, I think I'll use it kind of small this time. And basically I'm going to stick with a 45 degree angle like this basically opposite of the light source, and I'm going to fill in the whole mountain, just avoiding these highlight areas. And, and again, the only real trick with this is to stick with that kind of 45 degree angle. Now, of course, these first shadows here are too dark, so I'm going to lower the opacity of that layer. I think that looks pretty good. And the second set of shadows will be again on its own layer. Same brush, uh, same color. Just this time, I'm going to focus them sort of on the opposite side again of the light source, and they're going to be smaller than the first shadow. So for example, here's the first shadow. I'm going to stick the second shadow just sort of pushing towards the left side here. And it's pretty forgiving. I don't want it to sound too technical, but as long as you keep with that 45 degree angle and stay away from the highlights, it'll look fine.
And just like before, I'm gonna adjust the opacity of these shadows, but I'm also gonna change the transparency mode. So right now it's set to normal. I'm gonna set these ones to multiply, and then again set it so it's just a little bit darker than those first shadows, but still quite a bit lighter than these rocky outcroppings. And at this point, I don't need the sketch anymore, so I'm just gonna delete that. And I'm gonna finish up the shadows by adding the third and last kind of pass. So again, that'll be on its own layer above everything. Same color, same brush, same size we've been using. But these shadows are a little bit more important. These are gonna basically cover the darkest parts of this whole mountain. So first, I'm gonna go through and do a shadow kind of again at that diagonal angle under each of the rocky outcroppings. And then also I'll do a little bit of shading on the uh, opposite side of each peak. And because that side of the mountain is the furthest away from the light source, I'm gonna make sure I just go down the whole side of that peak and then maybe down here and around here as well. This is gonna give the impression that the mountain is very three dimensional and curving away. So by clustering the dark shadows over here, it makes that side just generally seem darker. Now I'm also gonna set uh, these shadows to multiply as well, just like that. And I'll lower them so they're the darkest of all the shadows, but still not quite as dark as the rocky outcroppings. And now at this point, I can merge all the mountain layers together, but I'm gonna make sure not to include the sky in that, so that's still on a separate layer. Now at this point, when all the shading on the mountain is done and it's merged together onto one layer, I recommend using the water blender to kind of soften it up. And my favorite one here is the Misty Blender. And you can use it at whatever size is big enough to kind of fit in between there. And I'm gonna focus on blending areas that look sort of uh, too much like marker, like especially over here. I'm also gonna make sure to avoid blending up the, the uh, rocky outcropping, so I wanna leave those alone. But I do wanna make it a point to blend and soften all the edges of the highlights. So now, as you can see, it's pretty well blended, but I left a couple of hard edges, especially on those darker shadows. It just looks nice to me. And then I also made sure to soften up the highlights quite a bit. Next, I'm gonna move on and sharpen up the highlights and make them a little bit more geometric. And I'm gonna do that with the eraser brush. And I've set it to the Forster Fine Liner. And I'm gonna basically erase the highlights kind of back into existence, just to show through pure white. But I'm gonna do it in a very geometric way kind of like this. So the boundaries of all the highlights is pretty hard and jagged. Next, I'm gonna use the same eraser brush to add a highlight on top of each one of these rocky outcroppings. Obviously some of them are already white, so there's not much I can do there. But down here, I'm gonna make sure to add this kind of uh, dotted highlight line effect, wherever you'd think the light would be hitting if it was coming from that angle. And next, while I still have the eraser selected, I'm just gonna add a couple of random kind of highlight lines, very similar to how we did the rocky outcroppings. And I'll do those pretty randomly, but focus some more on the bright side of the mountain. Now at this point, the mountain should really start to come together. I just wanna add a couple of fine details to give the impression that this mountain is very large and very far away. And when you're painting with watercolor, you don't have a lot of tools to kind of get that effect across. So what I recommend doing is uh, again, making a new layer above everything. I'm gonna select pure black and I'll change my brush to the Forrester Fine Liner and add a really small size, maybe even less than 10%. I'm gonna zoom in there and basically randomly add a lot of dots and dashes like this. And I'm gonna focus those on the rocky outcroppings, but also once in a while, I'll add some kind of random collections of rocks and stuff out here in the highlights. So our mountain here is almost done. I just wanna lighten the sky a little bit. So it's still on its own layer, so I can just lower the opacity and just set it to a point like that. And then once you're happy with how everything looks, you can just pinch and merge it all together onto one layer. Now, if I zoom out here, you can see the bottom of the mountain doesn't look so good. So I'm gonna use the Misty Water Blender again at the largest size and just soften this up and make it look like a storm or some kind of clouds are rising up and covering the bottom. I also think it might look good if I paint a little moon up here. So 
So you could definitely use some of the pine tree brushes to add a line of trees just covering the bottom of the mountain. And I recommend giving that a try, but in this case, I really just like the simplicity and minimalism of the original layout. So I think I'll pass on the trees this time. And there we go, this simple mountain scene is all done. And here's the final result. So if you really want to take your mountains to the next level, I recommend just pushing yourself to paint five different mountains. Just the mountains in the sky, you don't have to worry about trees or anything. And just make sure it's a different arrangement of mountain peaks each time. It'll probably only take two hours or so, and I guarantee you'll see an amazing improvement uh, in your structure and shading. And that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, please, if you think I've earned it, give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks again for all your support. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.